100, 6 right, 150, keep middle of a jump with the four left tightens of a crest. Good luck. All right, Zach, here we go. What's up, guys? It's Zach from Racing Sim Tools here. And first off, I just want to say I'm incredibly sorry. It's been such a long time since I've uploaded anything. However, we've been busy at Racing Sim Tools. In this video, we're going to be talking about some of the things we've been working on over the past couple of months. But before we start talking about that, let's talk about some of the things that were actually limiting us at Racing Sim Tools. First off, and probably the most important, is the code structure for PC2 Tuner. I just want to mention that I'm very much an engineer who likes to program, not necessarily a programmer who likes to engineer. PC2 Tuner was my first application to distribute to other people other than myself. And because of that, there are a lot of things that I learned as I was developing the tool that I wish I could have done differently. But it would have been hard work since it would require a total rework of the framework. Secondly, uh, PC2 Tuner only supported Project Cars 2. While this is probably one of my favorite sims, and most of you know that, since SMS announcement of the next generation of Project Cars, the active player base has definitely died down, even just from a few months ago. And last but not least, PC Tuner, Tuner was not very visually appealing. While it got the job done in terms of functionality, it wasn't going to be winning any beauty pageant awards to say the least. While aesthetics is not a huge concern, it does convey professionalism when done right. And if Racing Sim tools is to move forward and hire more developer, which in turn gets you guys features faster, is definitely an area we need to improve upon. So I've kind of outlaid what the issues were, but how do we go about fixing these issues? Well, the best solution, while probably being the most work intensive, is just to completely reprogram this software entirely. And in fact, that's actually what we did. <laughs> this is also why we haven't had any updates or new videos in a while. While the new software is still in development, we're getting very close to being done. And because of that, I wanna start talking about some of the new features, how the license system will work, and what you all can expect over the next couple of weeks. So the first thing that I wanna talk about, and it's probably the juiciest and most exciting part about the software, is gonna be the features. In PC2 Tuner, we had about 10 graphs in total. And this allowed you to structure the data in a meaningful way to similar to how a race engineer would. Um, this allowed you guys to make set of decisions based on the data and what was actually happening with the car. In the new tool, there is actually approximately about 90 graphs in total. So quite a lot more. The tool is broken into several different primary categories such as suspension, aero, engine, driver, etc. And then with in each primary category, there are two to four subcategories, which each contain two to four graphs on each subcategory. So there's gonna be a lot of data with this new tool. In addition to the graphs that show you the data on a per lap basis, we also are introducing run graphs. These graphs show you what's happening over a course of a session. So they're not on a per lap basis, but on a session basis. And this can help you identify if the car is getting more oversteer or understeer as the race goes on. And a few other things such as if the tire grip is starting to fall off, if you need a pit to switch tires. We also made a new track graphing system. Um, and you can actually overlay data on this new track. So you can see things like where your grip limit, if it's a high speed, low speed corner, if it's a braking zone, how bumpy the track is, um, or it, what specific corners you have oversteer or understeer in, and what magnitude of that. 
the new software is also going to be compatible with multiple sims. It's not just going to be Project Cars 2. We're trying to support as much as possible um, things including such as iRacing, R Factor 2, Race Room, a set of Corsa, etc. However, you will need a license for each game you intend to use the tool on, and I will be talking about this in the next section. And the, la the last but definitely not least feature that I want to talk about is going to be how the, the software utilizes an analytics tab. So in the last tool, we had the ability on the damper histogram to give you a suggestion if you need to increase or decrease rebound or bump dampening. We're going to be doing the same approach. Um, however, we're going to be using it for all our graphs. Um, we understand that all these graphs can be intimidating when, you fir when you're first starting out. While you'll gain a much more meaningful analysis by looking at the data yourself, the analytics tab can be used to give you just a rough draft. And it also is a great way to start learning, um, start seeing where those suggestions are coming from. Earlier in this video, I mentioned you're going to need a license for each game you wish to support. I want to go ahead and expand on this and describe it in a little bit more in detail. The base tool is going to be free. However, you will not be able to collect any data from your game unless you have a license for that game. If you've already bought PC2 Tuner, you're going to be receiving a new license for Project Cars 2 with this new software free of charge. But if you want to add on another game such as iRacing or a set of Corsa, you're going to need to buy a license for that game. The reason we decided to go this route is we want to keep the tool accessible to as many people as possible. By keeping the price per game low, it's not a big stretch for most people to afford a $10 for the tool versus if we made the tool $40 or $50. That being said, we are looking into pricing options in terms of bundling. So if you're one of those sim racers that have four or five sims, we are trying to find a way for you guys to get a discount. The last thing I want to talk about is the schedule. So the tool is currently still in development, but we are getting close to opening the public beta. If you would like to participate in this beta, please apply via the link in the description down below. We anticipate being able to go to the public beta in about two weeks or around May 18th, give or take a week or so. The beta will most likely be about a month in duration and then a launch shortly after. For the launch of the new tool, we are hoping to support at the very least iRacing, Race Room, Project Cars 2, Formula 1 2018, and Dirt Rally 2.0, with license for the other games to follow shortly after. As new games come out, we will be continually adding those games as support, but you again, you will need to get a license for those games as they come out. Well, that's everything I wanted to talk about, guys. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I hope I was able to answer all your questions. If you have any more questions or comments, please feel free to write in the comment section down below, and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Um, any activity that this video generates also helps bring in more people to the channel, so it's just a really good thing if you guys want to engage. Additionally, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be posting a video once per week. I'm trying to get more on a regular schedule of a video per week so please subscribe to the channel and tell any of your friends who might find some of this information helpful again this is zach from racing sim tools and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day